Well, how's everybody doing? Hey, I, I am so glad that you're out here. We want to welcome Wessico. How many of you from Wessico here tonight? All right. Good to see you. Good to have you. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love the attendance for this. And I, I want you to understand what TSC Nights is about. Um, you know, for me, uh, there was something last year where I really began to pray about how do we get people deeper in the things of God? You know, and, and, and Sunday morning you have a whole, you know, gamut of people that come from all different kinds of backgrounds. And you have to be sensitive to that. On Wednesday night, you know, we're really moving more towards community and that type of thing. And so I really just felt like we needed, we needed some extra nights that we could just get down with the people who really want to know more about the things of God and go into some things that are deeper. You know what I'm talking about? And, and our, we had our first one in January, and that was beautiful. And then this one, you know, each one, you, I kind of have a little bit of a theme. Like this one, you know, is the Holy Spirit. We're going to do another one in August. I believe that's going to be along the lines of healing is the plan. And, and then we'll see next year what we do. But, but, you know, it's funny because you get into this and, and know this. One, one of the reasons why we kind of cut worship a little short is we want to just give time. We don't want to be in a rush here, you know, and, and whatever God wants to do. I, I, and listen, let me just say this. I don't want you to pigeonhole how the Holy Spirit moves, okay? Let's just open to whatever He wants. But it was very interesting to me that about a, a, a week ago, I started really kind of praying about this and like, God, what do you want me to share? And I mean, bam, I got it. And it kind of hurt because it was, I'll, I'll tell you in a little bit, but because it was directed at me and it was directed at all of us. And, and, and I was like, okay, God, you know, I, I get it. And, and let, let, me, let me explain something before I, I, I get into this today and over the next three days is, listen, I, I believe the Bible teaches us that when we get born again, see that, that term, because we use it so much in Christianity, it's lost its impact. But when Jesus said it to Nicodemus in John the third chapter, it blew him out of the water. Okay, now, and, and so here's the deal. It blew him out of the water. Why? Because something spiritual is what Jesus was talking about and Nicodemus thought in a natural way. Does that make sense? And, and, and see, what we have to understand is when we get born again, we get born again to a brand new way of doing things. It's by the Spirit and not by the flesh, okay? It, it's, listen, it's by the Spirit, not by our intellect. Now, it's not that we throw away our intellect. It's not that we throw away what we're supposed to do physically. But what we understand is a priority system changes. It's no longer intellect first, reasoning first. Now it's the Spirit of God. And see, and what, I've, what I believe is happening in America is that we're kind of moving away from the move of the Spirit. See, and, and I want you to know something. The move of the Spirit is not something that just happens when you get a bunch of people together in a room. The move of the Spirit is something that should be a part of our lives daily. It should be the way we operate, the way we move, right? And then when you get us together in a room... You know, because all of us are hungry for the things of God, something explosive happens, right? The gifts of the Spirit begin to operate, all those type of things. And, and, and listen, I, I, I'm not going to go into great detail, um, but, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of you here in this room have experienced different things of the Holy Spirit. You know, I know I have. You know, I, I, I've seen some incredible things happen by the Spirit of God. You know, I, I'm not going to go into them in great detail, but I mean, I, I've, I've been in services where there's 12,000 people and, and, and for 30 minutes, nobody says a word. You could hear if a pin drop, you could have heard the pin drop. It was that quiet. And there's a smell of like the most beautiful garden you've ever smelled in your, in your life. And, and people didn't move. Why? Because the presence of God was so heavy. Here's the thing we got to understand, guys. The spirit of God is life. The Spirit of God is good. It's not weird. 
I know we have charismania and weird stuff happens. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about an authentic move of God that literally is talking about us learning how to flow and to move and to operate in the things of the Spirit on a daily basis. How to be led by the Spirit. How to hear His voice. Do you know He wants to speak to each and every one of you? You know, and, and we're going to hopefully tomorrow I'll talk more about that. We'll see. All right. But, but he wants to talk to us. Oh, not only that, he wants to give us the power to overcome sin. He wants us. The Bible says in John 14 through 15 and 16 that literally that the Holy Spirit will take it. He's a spirit of truth. He'll reveal the word of God to us. He will literally take and show us things to come. And, and he's our comforter. And that word comforter is so broad and it would it, take all, all evening just to try to describe what that word means. He's our helper in every, every um, way we can think of. But, but here's the thing that, that, that I, I want to get across today. And I'm going to be real honest with you. It's, it's kind of a heavy word. It, it's not a word that I would pick. It's not what I wanted to preach tonight. But it's what the Spirit of God directly told me. So I'm sitting there, you know, just praying. I think I was praying in the spirit. And, and, and I was just praying for the move of God. And, and you know what God said to me? He says, I would if, if, if you'd let me. And I said, okay, whoa, time out. And, 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 and he said, there's things that are in the way. Now, let's, let's go to Hebrews 12, 2. And, and we're going to kind of break this down a little bit and, 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 and just kind of talk about this all right and, and it says verse 1 therefore since we are surrounded verse 1 12 hebrews 12 therefore since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses now listen to this let us um let us also lay aside every weight it doesn't say sin it says weight in other words, there's things that are weighing us down that aren't necessarily sin. All right? And that's what God was speaking to me. He wasn't talking about sin in my life. He was talking about weights. I'm going to get into that more in just a second. But, but I think there's also people that struggle with the next part. And the sin which clings so closely all right, the sin which clings so closely. Every person in this room, we have a sin we struggle with. All right, uh, other translations, the New Living Testament says it this way, the sin that so easily trips us up. All right, every one of us struggle with that. And, and so, you know, the, the author of Hebrews is saying, listen, you know what? You've got a race to run. It's a spiritual race. But if you're going to ra run this race, guess what? You've got to get rid of the weights and you've got to get rid of the sin that so easily besets us, okay? Now, let me, let me give you an illustration of what I'm talking about. I, I don't know if they still do this because I haven't ridden one in a long time, but a while back I rented a U-Haul. I wish I hadn't, but anyway, I did. And, and, and they had a governor on it. You know what I'm talking about? So, so I, can't, I think when I rented this and then when they had the governor on it, I believe the speed limit was 55, which is, you know, really archaic slow. And, and, and I remember, you know, sitting there and, and wanting to go faster and couldn't because they had put a limit on it. Are you with me? See, and that's the picture that God gave me of us. Now, the beauty is I think we're ready to break through that limit. How, how many you know what I'm talking about? And, and so, listen, when, when we talk about spiritual things, we have to understand for us to grow in spiritual things, is the worship is beautiful, but we also have to be taught. We have to taught the way of the Spirit. We have to be taught what does it take for the Spirit of God to move. And, and, and so what, what we want to do tonight is we want to talk about how to get that governor off. How to get rid of the weights and what they are. Because can, can I be honest with you? Now, forget the sin for a minute. The sin that so easily, you know, makes you fall. I think you understand what that is. We're not going to really talk about that tonight. What I'm after is the weights. Because let me tell you, the weight is something that's in your heart. It, it, it's probably something no one else sees. It's not 
some crazy sin or anything. It, it's, it's something on the inside that's holding you back. It, it's a habit. It's, it's, a, it's a thing of the heart that, that gets in the way. It can be all sorts of things. It can be unforgiveness. It can be, you know, doubt, fear. You, you, the list goes on and on and on. But, but I, I want to talk about our attitude towards those things. All right? Because he, here's, here's what I find in, in the New Testament. I mean, in us, the American church. There are things that are weights, and we have a laissez-faire attitude towards them. We, we go, you know what, I, I know I have unforgiveness, but you have to understand what I'm going through. You know, I, I know I'm struggling with fear, but you know what, uh, you know, you got to know what I've been through. Okay? You know, I, you know I, I struggle with people pleasing, but you know, that, that, you got to understand, you know, after what I've been through, I'm doing pretty good. Right. And, and we have a tendency, now listen to me, because this is what the Spirit of God said to me. All right, so everything you're getting tonight, pretty much, I got through prayer. And, all right, and we are coddling the weights. And because we're coddling the weights, it's holding, it's a governor on our life so that we can't full, we can't experience the full peace that God wants us to experience. We can't experience the full joy that God wants us to experience. Have you ever wondered why you don't hear from God more? Listen, I want, I want everybody to hear this. God wants to speak to every person in the room. Now, he doesn't, he's, his, the number one way that he leads is peace. So let's make that clear. All right? So we're, we're not talking about an audible voice. But he wants there to be, a, we, he wants us to understand the leading of the Holy Spirit. And he wants to lead us in every area. He wants you to know what the next job you're supposed to have. He, if you're thinking about a mate he wants you to lead you i mean i, I don't know why I'm, I, I didn't even this isn't in the notes but we're just going to say this you know I, I cannot tell you how many people i have done premarital counsel with and not one of them has told me i asked them why are you marrying this person well we just love each other <laughs> gag me with a spoon all right i mean i'm serious <laughs> I, 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 think I, was, I, I, was, I think it was the last five years I finally heard somebody say, because God told me I was supposed to marry this person. I was like, finally, after all these years. You know, anyway, and, and I'm not talking down towards marriage. You, you understand that, but if you've been around the marriage block, you understand that's not enough, all right? All right, and, and, and so I, I want to I talk about a story that we talk about a lot. And I'm, actually, I'm going to talk about a character. I, I'm going to talk about Peter, all right? And I'm just going to let this rip. I'm not sure how long. I'm not going to worry about time. I'm going to get out what I believe the Spirit of God wants to get out. Tonight's teaching, then that's fine. It sets the foundation, all right? So you guys are awesome. You guys are all fired up and ready to go. All right, so let's go to Matthew 16, uh, verse 21. And look at what it says. For the time, for that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed on the third day and be raised to life. Verse 22, Peter, now listen, listen what Peter does. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Now, any of us in America would hear this and we'd go, oh, he cares so much for Jesus. Isn't that sweet? Come on, wouldn't we? But I, I want you to look at Jesus' response. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Now, 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 okay, now, listen, we read that in the Bible, and that's great for Peter. But what if somebody said that to you? I'm serious. I mean, what if I said that to you? You'd, be, you'd leave this church so fast, and you go to the other church, you won't believe what he called me. He called me the devil. Now, 
I have never done that and don't ever plan on doing that, all right? But, but I, I want you to understand something. See, so I've read that for years, and, and I'm like, God, I, I need to understand why this is so harsh, why this is so strong. He just, listen, I, I want you to understand this. He just had natural feelings towards Jesus, and Jesus rebuked him for it. Why? His natural feelings, come on now, listen, took priority over the will of God. And Jesus is already struggling. Jesus already knows that he's about to go through something hellish. I mean, hell itself is going to come down on him. And, and he's, he, Peter's one of his closest comrades. He's needing some support. And, and Jesus says, listen, man, you've been a stumbling block. The very thing I'm struggling with, you're, you're hindering me. He said, you care more about the things of man. Come on, this is a big time thing right here. This is where we start getting the big boy stuff. This is where we take off, you know, and put on the big boy pants. Come on. He said, you care more about the things of man than you do of God. Come on, how many of us are guilty of that? I'm serious. How many of us, how many of us are easily offended? Yeah, you're right. You don't have to raise your hand, brother. I appreciate that. He's being honest, you know, but we could all just kind of do that, right? How, how many of us jump to worry and fears just like that, right? Because why? Because we care for the things of the world more than we do Jesus. This is exactly what he said to me. This is what he said to me. There are certain things you love more than me. And I said, God, come on. You know, and here, here's the card we want to play. Come on, I'm, I'm just getting down where we're at. We're wanting to go, yeah, but this is what I've done for you. I've left this, and I've done this for you, and I've done that for you. No, God doesn't say, I want three quarters. He wants 100%. See, I, 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 listen, we're at a place in history. We don't want three quarters of the move of God. We want 100% of the move of God. Amen. All right, now, now listen, I, I'm going to show you this by Scripture. So Peter has an issue. He cares what people, about this world, and he, and he cares about what people think. And, and it's not just this one time. What happens in a few days? He denies Christ three times. He, right before the death, Jesus starts talking about his death and, and you're, you're all going to flee from me. And Peter says, not me. Everybody else will flee, but not me because I love you more. What does he do? Deny Christ three times. Now, now, now think about this. So, but how does Jesus deal with him? Okay, he's resurrected. He says, tell my disciples and Peter. He's not even a disciple anymore. Come on. That I've been raised from the dead. All right, a few days, we don't know how long, a week or so, after the first appearance of the disciples, they're fishing, they see Jesus, you know, on the shore. Peter jumps in the water, and, and they're around a fire, and, and they're eating breakfast. And then Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? More than all of these? Now, interesting question. Because that's the exact thing Peter said to him. I love you more than all of these. And Jesus came right back and threw his words in his face. And Peter says, you know I love you. Now, now look, I, I want you to understand this. He's fallen. Okay, he has completely fallen. He's denied Christ. And I want you to look at the issue that Jesus is dealing with. Do you love me? And he says, you know, I love you. And then he says, feed my sheep. What is that? Obedience. Then doom the will of God. And, and he doesn't ask him once. He asked him three times. How many times did he sin? Three times. And what was the issue? It was love. Now, it's not that, he wasn't saying you don't love me at all, but he's asking, do you all have your whole heart? 
Come on. Now, there's so much to this, but let me, let me just say this. You know, Peter turns around and, and, and does, you know, and obviously sees the Spirit of God move through him. You know, day of Pentecost, 3,000 people get saved. You know, a little bit later, you know, the, the man at the gate, beautiful, is healed. Another 5,000 people get saved. So Peter is seeing all this, you know, the, the power of God moving. But guess what? Down di- deep in his heart, guess what he's still battling? What do people think? And I can prove it to you. you know, uh, look, we're going to read a scripture to you. Uh, some of this you may not have really just kind of read by, like, I don't understand this. All right, but look, look at Galatians 2. Um, and this is Paul giving a narrative of his life, all right? And he's trying to explain his call to the Galatians. And in verse 2, verse 11, when Peter came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face. This is Peter. These are two apostles of the Lamb, and all of a sudden, Peter is getting confronted by Paul. How many would want to get confronted by Paul? I wouldn't. All right. Because he was clearly in the wrong before certain men came from James. He used to eat with the Gentiles. Jews weren't supposed to eat with the Gentiles before Jesus came. All right. I'm trying to just cut to the chase. And so it was a cultural thing. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles. Because why? He was afraid of who? Of that group. And, and, and I, I want you to notice that, that he said, I, I got to confront him because it was hypocrisy. And I want you to notice something. Paul didn't back down. He didn't go, he didn't, listen, a lot of us, I'm just, I'm trying to get you to understand something. A lot of us in that thing said, Paul, could you have just pulled me aside and, and dealt with me, you know, in private? But no, Paul dealt with him right in front of everybody. Then he writes about it so that 2,000 years later, we could still know about it. Come on. We, uh, th- why, why am I saying this? We are so sensitive to our own selves. Now, I, I want to I I explain something to you, and I, I'm going to re- get right to it. I believe for the Spirit of God to move in our lives, there's something that has to change in, in the way we look at life. All right, and, and I'm going to go to another passage here. Let, let's go to Psalms. I'm just kind of ripping right through this. Psalms 97.10. Listen to this. Oh, you who love the Lord. What does it say? Hate evil. Okay, let, let, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. That word hate literally means to abhor. It literally means to find something repugnant. Okay? I want to ask you a question. Do, do you find sin? Do, do you find even the little weights in your life? Do you, do you abhor them? Or do you coddle them? Do you hold on to them? Do you make excuses for them? Are you with me? Now, now why, why, is, why was Jesus so strong with Peter? Why was Paul so strong with Peter? I want you to understand this. Evil is destruction. Okay, and and I I was thinking about this, and I wanted to give you guys a word picture to help you with this. All right, and I'm going to tell you a quick little story. Um, Years ago, many years ago, uh, I had just kind of got into hunting, and we had just bought a brand new Suburban. And we we were out of this hunting place, but I wasn't really planning on hunting. We're just going to hang out, and then all of a sudden, a deer just came out. I mean, middle, I mean, it was middle afternoon, really odd, and grabbed my rifle and, without thinking, shot it. It was, it was a nice buck, in case you're wondering. And, and, um, and so we cleaned it, and we had, then I looked, and I was like, I'm kind of one of those people, it's like, we'll jump off the cliff, and we'll figure out how we're going to land later, all right, you know? And, and, and so... I never thought, like, okay, where are we gonna, how are we going to transport this deer? And, and so then I get this idea, we can throw it on top of the Suburban. Do you know how tall a Suburban is? And trying to put a buck on top of that, it was two of us, couldn't do it. So I thought, I got the brainiac idea that we'll just put down a bunch of plastic, put in the back of the brand new Suburban. 
And, and, and so my wife, I man, she's, she's great because she didn't get too mad at me. I mean, she was a little mad, but not horribly mad. And, and, and um, so I tried to clean it out and everything. Now, now I'm, I'm going to be really gross, all right, on purpose. Well, you, if you know, there's blood everywhere. No matter how much you try to cover that dark carpet, blood got on it. And I didn't clean it near up. And guess what else came? Maggots. So one day, you see, I, that's, I did that on purpose. I was looking for that <laughs> response. All right? So one day I opened up in the back, and there's these little white crawly things all in the carpet. And I mean, they're disgusting. My wife looks at me. She goes, you, you, you clean that up. I'm like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, she might be five foot, but we're taking care of that. And so... Now, listen, I, I want to tell you something. You know, I've, I've dealt with maggots before, but when it's in the carpet, trying to get that, I, I can tell you right now that maggots are really squishy. And they're really disgusting. It took a long time to, to sit there and comb literally all those maggots out of the carpet. Now, now listen. I, I, I want you to understand something. When I start talking about maggots, you immediately get disgusted. But I start talking about sexual sins, and you're like, hmm. Okay, here's what I want you to, here's what God showed me. We need to see doubt, unbelief. We, we need to see fear, unforgiveness as spiritual maggots that you are like no way I don't want any part of that come on and, and and when you start seeing things like that when you start seeing things that are not of God that are contrary to the word of God and then, listen I'm not I am not talking about being judgmental here okay there's a difference the second corinthians 3 6 says the letter of the law kills but the spirit gives life we're talking about a relationship with god i, I want you to understand that when you in entertain fear when you entertain unforgiveness when you entertain doubt and unbelief you are literally dating no well yeah you could say maggots <laughs> But, but I, I, I had another reference going in my head, and I didn't explain it first, so that was bad. But yeah, you, you are embracing maggots, but let me, let me say it a different way, okay? Let me say it a different way. They didn't go really well. All right. But let me say it a different way. You know, you're, you're cheating on God. Now, is there anybody in this room? Now, don't, don't raise your hand, because if you do raise your hand, this is really bad. All right? But is there anybody in this room that thinks it's okay to flirt with the opposite sex if you're married? No! We're flirting with the things of the world, and we're not of this world. And it's holding us back. And, 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 and listen, I, I want to wrap this up. But something that I, that I, because I was, I mean, I've been wrestling with this literally for a week. God, help me, help me to really be able to hone in on this. I don't want this just to be just a, a repentance message. So that's part of it. But, but it's more of an adjustment. Right. It's more of an adjustment in our life. And, 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 and I, 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 I love history. I've been, re, I've been audio book and this huge book on church history and, and I was reading about John Wesley. And I don't want trying to bore you with all the story. But, but here, here's the bottom line. John Wesley, you know, who's a, he, he literally started Methodism, all right? And, and really started a great revival. He struggled with his belief. He struggled with, like, okay, I, I understand the Bible. I, I, I've gone to Oxford to understand it. You know, he's a very educated man. But when he, when he looked at his own feelings, when he looked at his own personal life, when he looked at everything, his own experience with God, he, he was empty. And, 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 he, and he heard these other men speak, and one particular one was a great awakening in America, George Whitfield, and he spoke with great fervor and great faith, and people were coming and, and, and were receiving God, you know, and, and, 
And Wesley was so consumed by that, he said, I, I want to be like Whitfield. And he talked to this one guy, and he says, how do I have that kind of faith? And, and the guy's name was Peter Bowler. And this is what Peter Bowler said. And man, when I heard this, like, this is it. He said, you preach faith until you have faith. And then you preach faith because you now have faith. All right? And now, 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 what does that mean? That you talk the word, you talk faith, and then you get faith. Are you with me? And then you can talk the word in your life because now you have faith. See, we're waiting for faith to come instead of us grabbing it and taking it. See, there has to be this place where we, in our life, when we begin to recognize doubt, we begin to recognize fear, we begin to recognize these weights, we immediately say, no, I trust God. I trust his word. I believe in the Holy Spirit. God, I yield to you. And there has to be this place in our life, and, and, I, and I want you to hear this, there has to be this aggression, spiritual aggression, that you proclaim God's word above your feelings, above the weights, above all, even your understanding. There has to be this proclamation of what you believe. And that's where the Spirit of God begins to move and begins to operate. You can do, listen, because I've seen this. You can pray in the Spirit all day. I've done it. I pray in the Spirit. Get in the Word. And you're just like, what's going on? I remember one day, I, I was a whole week. And I mean, I'm spending time with God. And I'm just not doing well. Feels like there's a lead cloud above me. I'm, I'm just struggling. And I said, God, we, I don't understand. Remember when David would cry out in the Psalms, where are you? That was me. And all of a sudden, I saw it. I had allowed a little weight to get in. And, 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 and it changed the way I talked. It changed the way I thought. Listen, it changed the way I believed. And all of a sudden, I was talking negative. I was being critical. I, I had a little bit of, it doesn't take a lot. And I, that's, why, that's why you see the Bible, when you see the Bible strong against sin, that's why. I mean, I, okay, uh, who cares? <laughs> I don't, remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira? They died for lying. For lying. Anybody here lied? <laughs> I'm lying. No one's saying that. No. No, 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 I understand this. Now, the move of God is flowing like crazy, and they lied to the Holy Spirit. They didn't just lie to anybody. But we don't know that they weren't saved. There's a lot of people don't know. They could have been saved. Come on. And, and, and this is what Peter said to him. Why have you allowed the devil to fill your heart? They weren't demon-possessed. What happened? They let the weight get in. They started listening to it. It started, it started infecting them. The thing began to expand, and it literally became a spiritual disease that killed them. And, and the thing we have to understand that God hates these weights. He hates these sin. Why? Because it steals from us. God's, God's not trying to be this judge on high that just wants to take and make your life miserable. He's trying to give you the blessings of God. But we have to understand that we have to be ruthless in the things of God. We have to be ruthless when it comes to our thought life. You go to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and, and Paul uses some incredible language. Tear down every stronghold. He says, every, bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. Why? Because when you allow other thoughts to come in that are ungodly, they rip you off. See, and, and I, I can't get into all of it tonight. We'll see what we're going to do tomorrow night. But, but here's what I want you to understand. A, a lot of this happens in your thought life. You know, and, and, and if, you, if you don't have control of your thought life, and you're watching garbage and listening to garbage all the time, and, and, and you don't put any word in. I mean, we're not talking about a weight, man. You need a whole renewal. I mean, you need, you need to come in and have your brain just kind of washed. 
But then if you are putting the word in, then if you are putting the word in on a daily basis, then that's when it comes to the tweaks. It's like, man, those little things are getting in and they're ripping me off. See, I, I, here's what I believe. That God wants us to learn to flow. He wants us, see, when we start talking about community, see what community is all about, if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and Rick is filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and we're in communion with each other, and guess what? Rick now has, I, I, I'm, I'm loving my brother, we're praying together, and all of a sudden, I just notice something's not quite right with him. Because he's my brother, I'm walking in the Spirit, God reveals it, or, or I just feel like I need to start talking to him about it, and all of a sudden in that talking, it gets revealed, and we're able to deal with it. See, that's where healthy relationships, when we get isolated, we're in trouble. Because then the weight comes in, and it, and, it, and it just roots its way in, and before long, and it affects us. But when we're in healthy relationships, that's why James says that we're to confess our sins to one another. What does that mean? It means it doesn't, it's not talking about us getting up, you know, taking turns and walking up here and going, oh, yesterday I looked at a sh something I shouldn't have looked at. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about having a relationship and that we're dealing with each other's weights. We're dealing with each other's, you know, sins that are so easily cause us to stumble. Why? So that we can walk in freedom. Because, because the bottom line is when you get in the spirit, there's joy. Come on. There's peace. Man, there's this, there's this absolute freedom, and, and this is where we should be. This, this, this is what it looks like to be in the Spirit. It's not some weird, wacky thing. It's this absolute assurance that no matter what happens, it's going to come for my good. Why? Because God's on my side. God's in me. I'm walking with him and I'm in a relationship with him. I've got rid of all the weights. I've done everything I could do. I'm pray I spend time praising him. I spend time thanking him. And, I and I'm going to say this. The number one way to get rid of the weights is this. What, what does the Bible say to do? It says to put on the garment of praise for what? The spirit of heaviness. When the weights come in, so does the heaviness. How do you get rid of the heaviness? Put on the garment of praise, just like you put on your clothes. See, you, see I think sometimes we're, we're doing this. God, help me feel better. And God's going, I've given you all the tools. Just use the tools. That's like somebody with a hammer and a nail saying, somebody, I just, God, I just pray that somehow this board will, will be nailed to that other board. And right there, the hammer and the nail's there. See, we have spiritual tools, we have to use them. And that's why worship is so important. Let's, let's just stand to our feet, can we? And let's, let's just, I mean, if the worship team wants to come up, that's fine. I, I don't know what we're doing, I have no idea. But you know what, I trust him. Amen? Let's just close our eyes, let's just focus on him. Father, we just come before you right now. And first of all, God, I, I'm just so thankful for the hunger. You're very clear in your word. That if we're thirsty and we're hungry, that you'll feed us, you'll give us something to drink. Lord, we're hungry tonight. And Lord, I, I believe that the Spirit of God has spoken directly to us tonight. And, and, and every person in this room, I, I, I believe the Spirit of God's already been revealing to them the weights. Because the, every one of us in this room has them. For some of us in this room, there's some sin that needs to be dealt with. And, and I just believe, Holy Spirit, that you'll give them the courage and the strength to do something about that. If they need to talk to somebody, they will. Right now, I, I just want us all to take a moment. Right where we're at, just be, you know, however you want to pray, however you want to deal with that, just, I, I want you to, to, to just spend some, a moment with the Holy Spirit dealing with that thing. Don't try to dredge something up, something the Spirit of God reveals. You, you know it immediately. When I started talking about it, you knew it. Just, just begin to deal with that with God right there where you're at.
Yeah, there, there's people in this room that you have unforgiveness as God's dealt with you on that. You need to deal with it. You need to deal with it strongly. You need to deal with it ruthlessly. Not to give it any more room. Some of you have to go to that person and apologize for the way you've behaved. Now, if, if you haven't behaved in an improper way, you don't need to go to that person. Just, just deal with it in your heart. This is a heart issue. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God, we desire you. God, we want your Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Come on. You know, right? listen, look, look, look at me real quick, real quick. Listen, I, I, I know where we're at as a church, and I've seen it. We get into worship, and we get right to that place, and Lee has mentioned it to me. Rick's, I think, has mentioned it. I think we, even we talked about it. And, and it's like I can feel people are at this place where they're ready to worship God at a new level, and then they hold back. Do you know why we do that? Because we're concerned about other people. Listen, man, get rid of that. You got, you got to deal with it. Listen, you know what? I mean, David got so excited that he danced till his clothes came off. All right? Now, please, we're not, we don't need any nudity in the house, all right? But, but, but let me tell you something. You know what? There's a praise. Come on, now I want you to hear this. There's a praise that wins a war. Come on. And it's not, hallelujah, glory to God. Now, I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. If somebody was coming after your kids, hey, stop that. Right? No way. I mean, you lay down your life in a heartbeat to stop that. You go at it with everything you got. But then when it gets in the spirit realm, we got to get all sophisticated. You know why? Because we get up here. Listen, it is a heart relationship. It is not a head relationship. It, it, and, and now, 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 let me say this too, because there's another side of this, okay? And, I, and I'm going to probably get into this on Wednesday, I think. All right? This does not mean that you get into this artificial stuff either. Because Hebrews, the fourth chapter, talks about this. It says that the word of God divides between the spirit and the soul. The soul is your emotions. The artificial for the spirit of God is the emotions. I've seen it so many times. People get all whacked up in their emotions. This isn't an emotional thing. This is a spiritual thing. Now, it can touch your emotions. Understand, it's not an emotionless move, but I want you to understand, there's a spiritual thing. What is a spiritual thing? It is your faith in operation declaring the victory of God over your life. See, there, there's some things, there's some things in the house. There's some of you that are dealing with some things that, man, you've been battling. It's been, I'm going to use this word, I don't care. It's been kicking your butt. And you're like, oh, God, would you just move? Wimpy prayer alert. No, declare the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Almighty God lives inside of us. We have His Word. He declares that we're already victorious. He declares that we're more than conquerors. He declares that we can do all things through Christ. If Christ be for us, who in the world can be against us? That's who we are. But see, me declaring it for you is not enough. Come on. You've got to declare it for yourself. Some of you need to be able to have a radical worship. And it may be not be tonight. If it is, that's fine. But, but listen, man. I, I've had some experiences with God in my devotion time that would freak you out. I don't care. Because I want to walk in victory. Can, can we, without music, without a song, I mean, you can put the music, play the music, that's fine. 
But let, without a song, can we just worship God? Can we right here, right where we're at? And, and if we want to get a little radical, it's okay. I mean, listen, we'll get radical for cowboys. I think we can get radical for Jesus, all right? Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God for victory. Glory to God for victory. Oh, yes, we thank you. The things of the devil must cease in the name of Jesus. The power of God is in this place. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. We talk faith until we have faith. And then we talk faith because we have faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Oh, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, so bravacashabadabadarabate. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, sobra bakashobra masite. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh, Father, I thank you for hunger. I thank you for hunger in this place. I thank you for hunger in this place. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, Father, to take the, the governor off. Take off the limits. Oh, take off the limits. Take off the limits. Take off the limits. Take off the limits. Oh, hallelujah. Take off the limits. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Freedom in the house. 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 There's freedom in the house. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to ask you to be seated just for a moment. I just want to obey the Holy Spirit. We're going to sing, get ready for, we'll close out in a song. But but listen, um, there's two things I feel like I'm supposed to share in closing. Listen, here's how you know you're in faith. You're filled with joy. The pro, now listen, now listen, the product of faith is joy. Why? because you know that God's moving in your behalf and you're in complete trust. All the weights have been removed, all the interference has been removed, and you are in complete trust. It doesn't matter the circumstance, come on. No, no, I I want you to hear this. You can have that kind of joy in the worst circumstance because it's supernatural it's not based on circumstances anybody can have joy when things are going well all right so that that's number one so there's actually three things so the second thing is listen if this is all new to you i i I get it it can be a little weird but but listen you know i was a 16 year old boy where's cliff and he's, he won't want me to recognize him. He led me to the Lord. He's visiting. Good to have Cliff. So, and uh, he was in a Pentecostal church of God in Campbell, California. And, and I showed up there, went there for a year, freaked out. He went to a Sunday night service, really freaked me out. But, but here's the thing. Down inside, not in my head, but down inside I knew it was real. And I was scared, but I was hungry. Listen, the Spirit of God doesn't minister to our heads. It ministers to our heart. When we're talking about our heart, we're talking about our spirit. Okay, so if this is a little different for you, you know, I get it. Just just stick around. See, see, you know, if if there's not joy in the house. See see if this isn't the Word of God. Because you can tell we teach the Word here, all right? And and, and the the final thing, I, I just felt this. I just felt this. And, and, and listen, and I don't know who this is for, and I think it's for multiple people, but I, I, I feel like that, that God is speaking to several people in the room, quite a number of you, in fact, that God's ready to take the limits off. Now, now, now st- I, I appreciate the clap, but I, I get rolling and I'm an audio person, so I appreciate the claps. But, li- but listen, I, get, I want you to understand this. I, one of the things I hate about some of the prophecy that you hear now, you hear this like, God's just moving in 2019, he's taking the limits off. Well, why didn't he take the limits off in 2018? Did he just get in the mood in 2019? No, God always wants to take the limits off, right? But here's the deal, we get lined up. Are you with, okay, look, look at, we, I think they have this, I, I don't know if they do, Ephesians 3:19. If they don't have it, just listen. All right, listen to this. I think that we do. Don't we have that? Maybe not. Yeah, we do. All right. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Now listen to this. I I want you to listen to this. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Come on, I I want you to put your faith out for that. Listen, we read these scriptures sometimes. We just go right by them. That you be filled with the measure. I mean, think about that for a second, what that means. Look at man. You watch the way they walked around. It didn't, no matter what happened, it was like, we got this. Why? Because they were filled with the fullness of God. Oh, there's so much I could go into on that. Uh, I'll save just one quick nugget. You look at a lot of the moves of God and you'll, you'll see this. They were in the spirit. John wrote revelations on the Lord's day. He was in the spirit. 
Paul saw the man with a withered hand and he was in the spirit and he perceived that he had faith. Right? We can be filled with the fullness of God. Now, verse 20, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power that is work within us. Now, l- let me say this. There's two things that, that happens for the limits to be taken off. Number one is your calling. Because we're not all called to do the same thing. I'm called to do one thing, and that's what I'm, I'm called to do. And But within that, there are no limits. I'm the one who makes the limits. Does that make sense? Within that calling. So, so there's people in this room, you have a calling. But listen, I want you to understand something. Some of you are bound by your past. You're bound. Uh, uh, oh man, okay, I'll say it. I, wasn't, I, I would normally not say this, but your ethnicity. Man, I, I'm just being bold here. You're, you're bound by your, what you see as your limits. And uh, come back, let me tell you something. God gets great joy out of taking the foolish things and doing incredible things with them. And it's the people of great faith that do them. And and I I feel like that that this is a word for some folks, that God, you feel it. You feel like God's taking the limits off, that there's things have. If that's you, I want you to stand to your feet right where you're at. Just come on, just stand up. Don't hesitate, just stand up. That's you, God's taking the limits off. All right, the whole place is gonna stand up. All right, that's cool, I'm good with that. All right, and let, let's just pray. Father, I just thank you. I just thank you, Father, for the sense in this room. I, I know the calling on this church is immense. I, I know that you, you've not just called us to be in this location, but you've called us, Father, to spread out through the entire Rio Grande Valley. And, and Lord, we, we have it on our heart that we're even supposed to go international. And Father, I, I, I know that the calling on this church is to raise ministers. But Father, it takes all kinds to support the work of God. And Father, I just thank you for these people who have stood up by faith and believe in their heart that God says he's taking the limits off and so father I just come in agreement with them right now and father we come against those things that have been weights we come against those things that have been the the sin that's been so easily to to cause them to stumble and we say no more Lord that we treat those things with hatred and say we will not give those things place in our life and father we decree that your will is what we desire for our life. Lord, I thank you for absolute, wonderful, tremendous things to happen in their lives by the Spirit, Father. By the Spirit. Not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Let Lord, let them learn to trust in the Spirit. Let them learn to trust the Word of God. Teach them, Father, not to look at their own weakness and shortcomings. But as Colossians, the third chapter says, that their eyes are fixed on you. Lord, we believe that right now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come on, let's, everybody, let's go ahead and stand to our feet if we could. And uh, they're going to close us out, you know, um, in a song. And, And listen, in case you're wondering about the offering, if you want to give one, you can. We have uh, containers out in the foyer, little boxes, whatever. And and so you can just stick it in there if you want to. Listen, we just didn't want anything to interrupt. It's it's all about just what the Spirit of God wants. Listen, let's come tomorrow ready to go. I know you came tonight ready to go. And and, 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 and unless God changes my mind, we're going to probably talk about how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is one of the number one questions we get, okay? All right.